They're just there for a couple of hours. That's what and I, I told them they can park in the west lot of the noon hour. Well, I don't know she, if, I told them to park the west lot, but she had to park her out the other end. Well, that's the only open spot you Well, I mean, they can park anywhere they find a spot. Yeah. yeah so I was about to tell her to do that. She, she misunderstood the thing. But if they, it's only that hour or so, I don't think they're going to hurt anything to them because they have to walk. You know, a lot of people are equal. Well, I thought the intent was when we have a function or something, there's right. restricted parking. Right, but, they, but this is dirt and I had no, I had no, because I'm certain that, that no one will be ticketed for the parking in there. You know. uh, is that all right if I go ahead and call her? And, and yeah. Call back over and tell her? Yeah, I mean, I told her the same yeah. thing, but yeah. evidently. So uh, she said they lose two sparks because they're concerned about them. They have to walk. They don't have. So. And they're more than welcome to park in the county park. That's just what they'll do. The one next to the building. Yeah. Right? yeah. Why is that? Well, I'm, I'm confused. We're worried about park the two spots across the street. That's all it amounts to is two spots, right? That we're going to restrict. Right. Well. It's, it's, it's two spots. But as far as you've got the summer, you know, if the handicap got to walk or something like that, it's just quite a way to walk if you have to walk, you know, have to walk away or something like that. Yeah, but we have that parking lot right next to the building. Yeah. But their impression was a good park, you know, I think the park had parked her. It's the north end of that park, her north end, so they just walk. Oh, they park in anyway. I mean, it's not I just call it, you know. Okay. It's not, well, it's got a sign that says courthouse parking. Yeah, unless. Dry, but yeah. St. John. Oh, I didn't realize that. But I told them before they could park there. I told Marlene several times. I don't care. Yeah. So. Well, maybe we ought to make it so it's not. Because what's, what's the problem? We're going to assume that people come down and park there to the courthouse parking spots. I don't care. We have what a parking you lot back here for the employees. If you and behind the annex. Now. Well, we just opened it up to have just four. Well, we just opened it up. Uh, well, four had the had parking all around them, where around there were, or else it didn't have any place to park around here. And that's what decided that'd be more convenient over there just to have that. Because the bank was losing some parking with all the employees parking here. Also, used to playing when we would all park. Yeah, because he parked on the ground the square that way. So that's why we made that courthouse park. Some park there, some don't. Some employees still park over here. You yeah. can't make them park. Right. It's just a courtesy to the rest of the businesses yeah. around you. Because apparently on Fridays during court. On court days is what's yes. bad. Oh, right. You know, because. That. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. So they're mad. I was just trying to think where's the traffic. No, 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 well, on, on, when they've got court upstairs. A lot of traffic. Yeah. Probably yeah. wouldn't tell them they free to use anything over there and it's just this right there in front just for the R so it's not going to make it easy. Yeah. I can say we're we about to park for a full day. It's just a verbal agreement for the idea. Yeah. Yeah. But we're still going to restrict the parking in front of the annex? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll, but they can park there. <laughs> but they, they can go ahead and park there. Well, who knows? <laughs> citizen and I wasn't speeding because I saw him before. Ah, oh, he didn't have his radar. No, I no, think he did. <laughs> he saw him and he left his 80 feet of black <laughs> strip. I'm free. Yes, ma'am. I just put another attitude of this with another ticket. Another one. Right. <laughs> uh, I was just wanting to visit with you guys uh, about the courtroom. A couple things. I think there's some maybe roof damage possibly. I've got uh, plaster coming down off the ceiling on the east side up against the wall. I just happened to notice it. Is around that the area where the, the chimney is so long? The, the I don't know where the chimney is. Well, 
they 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 kept her on that thing. Sleep her on that one time, right? Jane was some side of Delta. I have no in relation to that. No, I didn't. But but uh -huh. that, kick out weird. Well, it's it's not the, you know what a jury box is, and then it's just on past that to this. I get turned around up there a little bit on the east side. But uh, I didn't know if you would want to go up and look at it to see what you thought. When, when you have a moment. Uh -huh. And another thing is I'm kind of concerned about the benches in the courtroom with the age that they are getting to be. If you would think there would be someone that might want to come in and look at them, or if you guys have any experience in, <laughs> in the structures of sorts to make sure that they are sturdy enough to... You mean they're getting loose or what? Well, yeah, there's some that are, and, and they can, some of them can be removed out of the courtroom because they're, they're kind of squished mm -hmm. forward. I don't know that there was always the, the shelves for those old docket books that they put back there. And then there's a cabinet with kind of memorabilia, court memorabilia. And I'm taking that when they put those in, they had to push some of them forward. So there, there's really too many right now. But, um, uh, you know, historically, you know, yeah. they've been around for a while. <clears throat> yeah. These and chairs are rolled. Take it down to, mm -hmm. and refinished it. That, that's all these. Uh -huh. well, so we have some of, there's some in the back of the courtroom like this even. Mm -hmm. And I think those were the chairs that were at the attorney's desks. You know, Mary, when she was clerk, she replaced the jury's uh, box seats and the, you know, the attorney's chairs and, and the witness stand seat. And I think all those chairs got pushed also back to the back oh. of the courtroom. <laughs> so, um, if I guess we could look at my question. Well, uh, and if you want to finish your yeah. business. Well, we don't. We're pretty free right now. We'll recess. Very chosen. Guys, done for me in the law. I have the uh, equipment that I have to
I just need to know. I, I told you before I contacted um, Service Master and ProClean, and they didn't want to touch them. So. Mm -hmm. And Brad's happy with these people? Yeah, Sherry said they do a great job. They, they haven't had any problems with them at all. And it's the only one that we've got. <clears throat> Did you contact the, <clears throat> what's, what does it, the uh, rest stop out here? I don't have phone number for them. They're not good. Not good. Mm -hmm. Who's that? Fastest. Fastest. I don't know what they did. I don't know. I don't know the phone book. I didn't find it.
we as a county, if we vacated at least the the side that's, that's adjacent to the WIT Center, if that would be sufficient for them for parking and, and maybe not designated that totally as county parking. It seems logical, even though we own it, that it's contiguous with their property. But what we're we'll discussing this morning is that let them go ahead and park, and even though it says county parking, if there's a problem there, they can go ahead and park. They're only there a couple hours, and also in front of the annex with two spots down there, just their lunch hour, we decided that it, uh, you know, they can park there. It's just about an hour or so, anyhow, yeah, so it's not going to be like a parking okay. thing. But, but still. I, was just, I was just thinking if you vacated that whole parking lot with, with at least our county employees, then it'd probably open up enough parking spots in the which would actually be better for them not to have a crossroad to stay on their side of the road of, of where they're going to. Not that there's some high volume traffic in St. John, but I mean, it, it actually would kind of fall in line with both of what we're wanting. We're wanting to have um, offloading when we have an event that right. we at the end of the for sure. sure. But we still want to go ahead and restrict right. the parking in front of the end. That's not, but we will you know, allow functions and so on and so forth for emergency vehicles and stuff. So, but if they want to park over there They're in up. front during the lunch hour, I'm certain yeah. no one's going to issue a ticket. Stop like that. That's going to be over there. I mean, that's what I was. That's what I was concerned with. I didn't know if we could kind of. I didn't know if the law enforcement would even say, "Well, we can look the other way during certain times." <laughs> You can park out here in this one hour parking all day and they don't care. Okay. Well, that, that, that makes it real simple, then. <laughs> well, I'm curious. Yeah, I know. That's what I heard when I was getting that. Can you well, park it out here, brother? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you probably get sick. I would. <laughs> uh, we've just been very busy with cars. Everything's, as you know, really dry. Um, we went over and helped um, Edwards County. Would that be south south of Larner? It'd still be a little bit south of Larner. It'd still be Edwards, wouldn't it? Is that yeah. is Larner? Or what? Pawnee. Pawnee County. Pawnee. It might have been Pawnee County. I'm not sure. I was out of town. But uh, we were over there six hours helping them uh -huh. on a nasty old fire. That was a big fire. Is that lightning? Is that I'm not sure what the cause was. Take a look. Last evening it rained. Yeah. I think it was. Um, I see what the papers said like. Yeah. Friday evening. Friday evening. Yeah. And then there was one just You look at Terry Bradley's picture in the paper. Oh, I'm going to you know, show you what there was up. But there was probably there's some yeah. couple of cedar trees, probably 60 foot flames. Whoa. <laughs> Pretty nasty fire. You see, it's like running good this time. We are still looking at uh, the ADP. Uh, Nita had talked to me about putting all the county employees in. At the time, um, if the ADP is a phone system that we can use to send out a message. You send it out from one spot, and you can send it to however many you have in the system, thousands if you wanted to. But um, at the time, it, it looked like the, that the government was going to come out something similar. I haven't seen anything, so we probably want to. Uh, we re look at that and see if we want to go ahead and get the county employees hooked up to that. The other thing that we're looking at is we're looking at uh, a radio system upgrade. Um, they're going narrow banding with everything, and um, we really need to stay up on that because uh, we could be a sticker shock <laughs> at the last moment if we don't. Um, and it could affect even our pagers. And the pagers are just outrageously expensive already. So I got TJ uh, looking at, uh, at a couple different uh, firms and, and bringing it up to ADT. ADT is just a little bit clunky for, for the dispatcher to get it out, but I think if they could do a little tweaking of their system, that it would work for us and it would work for anybody else too. So TJ's busy with them about that too. If there's some way that we could, we could push it out a little faster, the, the message, and possibly uh, replace our, well, just get rid of our pagers. And that'd be great. Then we wouldn't have to mess with pagers all the time. And, uh, uh, just about everybody's carrying a cell phone. So, that's where we're at. Any grant money available for that? 
less and less grant money all the time. Uh, uh, there is, I mean, how quick you got Well, with the ADT, it, it wouldn't, uh, there's not a real big expense uh, associated with that. It's, um, most of the time uh, with grants, you're looking at, at least in the thousands, and you know, we're just not talking. That's a maintenance fee, a monthly maintenance fee for yearly, and uh, I, I don't think it would be enough to, enough to get a grant with it. You'd, you'd be looking at more grants for equipment, because it gets up there high. So what are you suggesting here? I'm, I'm confused and concerned. Well, EMS people primarily carry, carry uh, they at least do a radio, because you need to be able to talk to them almost immediately. Mm -hmm. and affirm that they got the page. But fire the fire folks we, we need, when they get in the truck they need a radio. So we couldn't we couldn't possibly afford to give them all a radio. Plus they don't really want to carry a big old funky radio either. And if they lose one that's seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So they carry the pager. Well they can't talk over that pager but the fire guys, you know, we page them out and and they may come, they may not come, depending upon their availability. Okay. EMS, we, when they're signed up, they they better be coming. <laughs> so they get a radio. So the fire guys get a pager. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the pagers are, they're upwards of four fifty, five hundred dollars And they're narrow banding, they're, they're changing the spectrum of, of our radio system. Yeah, we have to. And so in that, we're not sure how that's even going to affect some of our pagers. Uh, this Thursday, we, we're going to be running, shuttling all of our trucks that have 800 radio system because they bought some 800 radio system uh, components. A lot of uh, counties are going to that, but it's outrageously expensive. These are three thousand dollars then, so it's just it's just extremely expensive. So we're not really going to go the 800 system, but since there's so many, the count, the state did supply some 800 radios. That they give us one for all of our animals. They give one for a dispatch center, and then we have an additional mobile radio, and we have actually one in in our uh, uh, in our station out there. And uh, so, what we want to do is we we're in need of more pagers. Our pagers, are, you know, they they have a maintenance. They 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 get old. They they break. They we're at a point where we need we need more. But I'm not really real keen on spending a bunch of money on uh, on pagers, especially if, if this narrow banding will affect them in any manner, but uh, they're just expensive. Even if somebody loses one of them while they're working, they have lost $450, $500. So I think this ADT, the ADT thing is, is it's internet-based, and what it does is it sends out a message. You type it in, it sends it out, boom, almost instantaneous. And it It'll tell you what what's up, and you can't talk, you can't listen to it. But you could put out another message, I guess, if you wanted to. If you wanted to, um, <laughs> say for some reason, well, no, it, it, it'll go to audio though. It converts it to audio. Okay. So my phone would ring and say, "This ADT message, you have a fire and such and such." It's using the personal cell phones. Yes. Yeah. And it only costs us like a, it's pretty minimal. Four or five hundred dollars a year. I guess what concern, that's for all of your saying, or for each one of them. That's for a certain number that we bought. I mean, so I mean, not, not, just, not just for one, but several of them. You're talking about that four hundred dollars a year. Well, that's like a hundred people, but that'll be this way. Mm -hmm. And we either send it by cell, landline, or email. Two phones, two phones, and an email. So you put is it, it on. one time? Did we? And you're going to do away with the pagers altogether? I'm hoping. If, it, good. if it works. So. That's if, it's, if it's fast enough and if the dispatchers feel like that, you know, that they can handle that. That's why I'm going to visit with them. I'd like them to make it just a little bit more simple. It's kind of a multi-step thing, which, which I don't think it'd be impossible to do it even the way it is now. But they could streamline it just a little bit where it could be a little quicker. It, it might take 30 seconds to get, you know, to get it all typed in and step through the, the thing. Well, when we, when you were discussing fixing the, the uh, building up, mm -hmm. we had those funds. We talked about the radios then. Yes, yes, and any funds that we have left over, we'll push towards towards communications also.
but you know, I don't oversee the whole radio system, so it's it's a conversation you should have with the sheriff also. It, and it's kind of an oddity. And I was visiting with the folks out, at the, you know, the, the paid folks out at the building uh, at the EMS station right before I come here. It's a rather oddity that you don't have one person overseeing the total radio system. We we ended up with kind of a kind of a, a little bit of a mess because we contracted, the fire department contracted with Motorola. Well, when we did that, uh, the other, the sheriff's office contracted with, with another entity. Well, this entity couldn't work on these radios. So now you got two radio systems that two people are simultaneously, you know, the, the person that we really wanted to service our equipment can't service our equipment because it's exclusive. So you got to be careful, and honestly, you, you probably got to. You, you have to have really good communications on the communication system if you're going to have more than one person's hand in the clock. Otherwise, one person not you're saying the old you time. guys have your your system, and the sheriff's department has theirs. What about roads and bridges? Is theirs? I'd say they're probably kind of on their own too. You know, and <clears throat> hopefully everybody talks to everybody, so you make sure that. Everything's kind of uh, in alignment. Uh, along the same lines, at Zenith, they had a transfer blow, blow up out there. And we have what's called a voter. It, it, what it does, it kind of picks up the signal and boosts it. And um, they had a, uh, a big, couple big transformers out there at the, the grain elevator that burned up. Unbeknownst to us, that voter went out when they did that. And so we're looking at how to get that back up. And uh, I, I don't have a price tag on it. What, what they did was they rewired it, and now we need to, and I just found that out this morning, we need to, we need to be able to get a, they don't, they don't mind supplying the power to it, but we're going to have to come up with the funds for a transformer to transform the electricity down to what we can use for our voter. And I'll find out what that cost is. If it's uh, cost prohibitive, we, we may look at moving it over to, Stafford up on the tower or something, and probably get the same boost out of it because we'll have a higher, higher, we'll have a, a high enough spot, I think. Mm -hmm. But right now we're having kind of sketchy. If you listen to any of the radio traffic, which I don't know if you do, but uh, oftentimes you'll hear the dispatcher calling and saying that your uh, your radio traffic should be calling somebody and saying the radio traffic is is not clear. Well, oftentimes I can hear them on my little old portable radio, and it's clear. So it's not only a problem with, um, it's not necessarily a problem where sometimes the dispatcher thinks it's a problem with, with their communication. It's really not. It's they're, they're having trouble receiving it for some reason. And then probably the cities have different types of radios, or they have? I believe they do. Uh, we visit with Janelle, um, Misty did, and she's going to talk with the person that they have kind of connected with the building. And um, she hasn't gotten back with us yet, but I think she's been very busy with the place. And I will be in Topeka for some emergency management training. Uh, we leave on Tuesday night and be back about uh, in the early afternoon on Friday. And then if I could have an executive session uh, to talk about non elected personnel or Five minutes. Ten. Ten minutes. Ten. Ten. How do we go into executive session? Play no value. He's almost done. Short on time, dude. Ten minutes. <laughs> uh, I second. Five minutes never works. <laughs> never works. Not for us. It's been moved and taken, and then we go into executive session. Just This is the one that prompted everything, yes. He said, okay, that changed. What if you said no?
and then some, you know, sometime, well, and then they, they probably want to talk to them about it, spray them a little bit, There's some sort of chemical on there, too. Yeah. I mean, because once you remove it, then it starts to get glazed over, you're, you're setting yourself up for right. lots of things. Especially, I mean, especially in the parking lot, because there's some, some fog there, too.